You have learned that the humanist scholars of the Renaissance were influenced by classical ideas. So too were architects and builders. Renaissance architects studied Greek and Roman ruins and they modeled their own buildings on what they learned. They were particularly attracted to rounded arches, straight columns, and domed roofs. Architects also added their own ideas to classical building styles. During the Renaissance, wealthy families built private townhouses known as palaces or palazzi. Many had shops on the ground floor and homes above. Many palazzi were built around a private courtyard which might contain statues and other works of art. Public spaces were often influenced by humanist ideas. For example, humanists valued good citizenship. Architects designed public buildings where citizens could interact in settings that were grand yet welcoming. They used Roman-inspired roof porches called loggia to join buildings and create outdoor plazas. Advances in engineering made new kinds of architecture possible. For instance, one of the most impressive architectural feats of the Renaissance was the Grand Cathedral, the Diomo di Santa Maria del Fiore. Florentines started building this eight-sided cathedral in 1296, but they had to leave an opening for the dome. At the time, they didn't know how to build a large enough dome that would not collapse. It took a Renaissance architect, Filippo Brunelleschi, to solve the problem. Brunelleschi had studied ancient ruins in Rome. He had also learned about the mathematics involved in creating buildings. The dome he designed and built for the cathedral took true engineering genius. It used no internal support beams or columns. Instead, eight huge stone arches met at the top of the dome and leaned against each other. Hoops of iron, wood, and brick wrapped around the arches, keeping them in place. Runaleski invented machines called hoists to raise building materials and food to workers at the top of the dome as they were building it. The magnificent dome was finished in 1436 it stood more than 300 feet above the city. It still stands today, over 500 years later. From its top, you can see most of the city of Florence. Wealthy patrons made Renaissance Florence a thriving center of art. The Medici spent huge sums of money on fine palaces, paintings, and statues. The Palazzo Medici was filled with works of art that were commissioned by the family. Patrons like the Medicis created opportunities for talented painters who made a number of advances in style and technique. As you learned in the last chapter, Renaissance painters were influenced by the renewed interest in classical culture and the spread of humanism. They wanted to depict real people who were posed in lifelike ways and who showed feelings. They also wanted to include realistic background. The result was a very different style from the more flat, rigid painting of the Middle Ages. One key advance made by Renaissance painters was the discovery of perspective. Painters used perspective to create the appearance of depth on a flat surface. Renaissance artists used several techniques to in indicate depth. One was the size of objects. The smaller a painted object, the farther away it appears to be. The larger an object, the closer it appears to be. Painters also learned that a feeling of depth could be created by lines that came closer together as they receded into the distance. They discovered that careful shading could make figures and objects look three-dimensional. Adoration of the Meiji, a famous painting by Sandro Botticelli, shows some of these techniques. Science and mathematics helped artists make other advances. The Florentine artist Masaccio used geometry to figure out how to divide the space in a painting to make scenes appear more as they would in real life. Leonardo da Vinci and others studied anatomy. They observed bodies and how they moved. Their studies helped them to portray the human body more realistically. Renaissance science also gave painters new materials, such as oil-based paints, to work with. Oil paint was made by mixing powdered pigments or colors with linseed oil. This type of paint was thicker and dried more slowly than the older egg-based paint. Oil paint also allowed artists to paint over previous work to show details and texture in new ways.